In 1945 the war in the Pacific was no longer in Japan's favor. In the beginning Japan was still thriving in the war, but over time they were gradually defeated by America. The rise of America began after the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor, so it was feared of the Japanese commander, Admiral Yamamoto, and said these words. I am afraid that the attack we made on Pearl Harbor only woke up the sleeping giant. What this commander was referring to was America, which cornered Japan in the battle in the Pacific only to worsen the situation, because they are now also faced with growing forces of Russia. On the other side of the border of their crumbling empire, every Russian soldier is eager to take revenge for the successive defeats of the past decades against Japan. Yet the Japanese Bushido code is very clear that no one will give up even though they knew they were about to be defeated, but there was one Japanese soldier whose dedication to the Bushido code could not be matched. This soldier was Haruo Onoda, the Japanese soldier who did not give up for three years even after World War II was over. Haruo Onoda was born on March 19, 1922. He joined the Japanese Imperial Army when he was only 18 years old. Onoda is of the lineage of soldiers and warriors. His ancestors were former samurai members who participated in the frequent wars that took place in Japan's feudal history. His father turned served as a Japanese soldier and died in the Second Sino-Japanese War. Because Oenoto was gifted with talent and ability, as a soldier he was trained as an intelligence officer in an elite commando school. This is what they call the Nakano School. This is where the first step in training special X troops in jungle and in guerrilla warfare begins. They are also trained to sabotage counterintelligence and propaganda skills that Oenota will use in the coming years. In 1941 when Japan seized the Philippines and overthrew its current government which resulted in the temporary withdrawal of the Americans, only two years later the Japanese forces scattered around the South Pacific dwindled. Meanwhile the American forces continued to grow stronger and pushed Japan backwards whenever they clashed so the next American plan was to fight and defeat the Japanese in the Philippines. Because the Philippines is a strategic location that whoever occupies this country has a huge advantage in trade such as oil supply. When they expelled Japan from the Philippines, America was sure that a few months later they would surrender. So the American plan was to expel the Japanese by any means. So in 1944, the Americans were already fighting against the Japanese here in the Philippines. The Japanese did nothing with the combined forces of the Americans and the Filipinos, so some of them fled and the other Japanese hid on different islands here in the Philippines. On December 26, 1944, Oenota was sent to Labang Island and assigned to engage in guerrilla warfare against the invasion of American troops. The normal strategy of the Japanese was that they fight immediately face to face so that they will not be pushed back by the enemies into the forest, because in the forest it will be difficult to fight that was the ingrained mind in every Japanese soldier. When Oenota arrived on Labang Island, the commander ordered him to fight in the jungle so that he would not be easily seen by the Americans. The strategy taught to him was that he would hide in the jungle, and from here he would make surprise attacks against the enemies. When the additional American forces arrived on February 28, 1945, the Japanese forces were completely defeated because they'd been outnumbered by the number of soldiers arriving so their forces weakened even more. They felt that they had no hope of recovering although their defeat was certain. Oenota was under a strict order not to give up and if their defeat was certain they would simply commit suicide. He ordered his three other companions, they are Private Akatsu, Corporal Shimada, and Private First Class Kujuka, to follow him into the jungle and start fighting the American enemies again. What they didn't know was that Japan had surrendered, and the American forces quickly left after defeating the Japanese opponents, while Oenota had no idea what had happened. So he began to launch guerrilla raids against the Filipino soldiers. In 1945, Oenota noticed that no fighting was taking place around them and due to the lack of a way to communicate with other units of the Japanese, Oenota just thought that the fighting had been moved to another area. So he still continued his guerrilla campaign. Oenota and his comrades even ambushed the farmers and joined the police shout out in this area. The United States learned that there were still active Japanese soldiers on the island of Labang who had no idea about the surrender of their country and began distributing leaflets to inform the remaining Japanese soldiers that their comrades had surrendered and that the war was over. Oenota soon found one of these leaflets, but he immediately assumed that it was just propaganda and that he thought the purpose of these leaflets was just to deceive them so that the opponents catch them because of Oenota's trading in propaganda technique he was only more suspicious of leaflets he thought they were just one of the many soldiers of the Japanese which still continues to fight to that day. He was sure that Japan would only revolt temporarily but the defeat of Japan in his mind was impossible to happen by the end of that year, although many of the leaflets were scattered in the jungle of the pit. 
and this time with official surrenders signed by their generals Yamashita of the 14th Army, Oenota carefully reviewed the orders, but because of propaganda training he did not believe them. And he thinks it's just fakes in the minds of Oenota and his colleagues the surrender of Japan would not happen, and was nonsense just because they think Japan will fight until the very last soldier lives, as they do. For another four years the guerrillas continued to fight the Filipinos they raided farms to get the food they needed, they also sabotaged fishing boats and engaged in more destructive activity because of their ability to do whatever they wished. Since they had memorized the whole area due to the length of time they had lived there, Oenota and his companions stole and took all the fruits and berries of the tree they could find, they also stole rice and other things which they can use on the local farmers they raid. They continued to fight with their remaining weapons, and they persevered to fight, until their death, nonetheless. In 1949, Private Akatsu realized that the war seemed to be over so he left Oenota's unit he lived alone in the jungle for another six months before surrendering to the Filipino army in March 1950. Akatsu informed the U.S. and Filipinos authorities about his comrades, who were left in the jungle, and still fighting. The U.S. conducted an operation to find the family members of the three remaining soldiers, they later obtained photographs and letters from relatives urging them to surrender. They spread the messages throughout Labang Island using helicopters in 1952. Unfortunately when he saw the letter and picture of their relatives, he thought that maybe Japan had really lost, but what they thought was that maybe their relatives were already being held by the enemies, they suspected that they were being held as a hostage by the Americans, and the opponents are forcing them to make these letters to get them out of the jungle. Oenota's belief further strengthened their resolve to continue fighting and not give up. Two years later Corporal Shimada was shot and killed by the Filipino search party. The goal of this group is to find, arrest, and take them to the triad for the murders they have committed in the past year's case. Because Anata already memorized the mountain, so it was good to hide and the Filipino search party never found it. Eighteen years later Oenota, along with Private First Class Kujuka continued to fight with the police and peasant forces, until in 1972 Kujuka was killed by the police while raiding a place on the Labang Island. Oenota was left alone, but he still did not give up. In 1974 a Japanese traveler Norio Suzuki started traveling to the Philippines because Oenota did not know that in Japan he seemed to become an instant celebrity. Due to the spreading news about his non-surrender, so Suzuki wanted to see the brave soldier Oenota. February of that same year, Suzuki arrived in Labang Island and successfully found Oenota. He greeted it and told Oenota-san, the emperor and our compatriots in Japan were worried about you and your safety. Suzuki also told the old soldier that the war was over a few decades ago. Oenota said he would not give up until his own superior officers told him that the war was over and that he had fulfilled his duty as a valiant soldier. The Japanese government immediately sought out surviving commanding officer Major Taniguchi to take him to Labang Island. On March 9, 1972, 52 years old Oenota emerged from the jungle and was still wearing his services uniform, carrying his rifle and services sword. Here he met Major Taniguchi, and here he finally accepted the order from his commanding officer. Here he finally surrendered. He later handed over his sword to the Philippine president, who granted him pardon for the many crimes he had committed. When he returned to Japan, Oenota was awarded as a hero, but later on, he was disappointed when he found out what really happened in Japan during the World War II. He could not believe that Japan had surrendered, and it apologized for the war in Asia. He was also disappointed when he discovered that the military had been defeated by the Allies. Oenota did not become comfortable with the new liberal Japan seeking peace. Oenota became the opposition, and he called for the restoration of Japan's former strength and power. Fortunately no one noticed what Oenota wanted to happen. He could not accept the fate of Japan, because it was not the former Japan. Oenota later moved to Brazil. In 1975, Heru Oenota passed away on January 16, 2014.